Femoral artery is the chief artery of the lower limb. Femoral artery is the continuation of external iliac artery. It begins behind the inguinal ligament at the mid inguinal point. Femoral artery passes downwards and medially first in the femoral triangle and then in the adductor canal. At the lower end of the adductor canal, at the junction of middle and lower thirds of the thigh, it passes through an opening in the adductor magnus to become continuous with the popliteal artery. Now let's look at the branches given off by the femoral artery. In the femoral triangle, the femoral artery gives off three superficial and three deep branches. The three superficial branches include the superficial external pudendal artery, superficial epigastric artery and superficial circumflex iliac artery. Superficial external pudendal artery supplies the skin of external genital organs. Superficial epigastric artery supplies the skin and fascia of lower part of anterior abdominal wall and superficial circumflex iliac artery supplies the skin along the iliac crest. The three deep branches include the profunda femoris artery, deep external pudendal artery and various muscular branches. The profunda femoris artery is the largest branch of the femoral artery and is the chief artery for the blood supply to all three compartments of the thigh. It arises from the lateral side of the femoral artery about 4 cm below the inguinal ligament. As the profunda femoris artery descends, it passes posterior to the femoral vessels. It leaves the femoral triangle by passing deep to the adductor longus and continuing downwards, it passes first between the adductor longus and adductor brevis and then between the adductor longus and adductor magnus. Its terminal part pierces the adductor magnus to anastomose with upper muscular branch of the popliteal artery. Now let's look at the branches given off from the profunda femoris artery. It gives the medial circumflex femoral and lateral circumflex femoral arteries. Beside also it gives various muscular branches and perforating branches which are four in number and are numbered from above downwards. The first perforating artery arises just above the upper border of the pectineus and the second at the lower border of the pectineus. The second perforating artery also gives a nutrient artery to the femur. The third perforating artery arises on the adductor longus and the fourth is the termination of profunda femoris artery. Now let's discuss the course and branches of the medial circumflex femoral artery. It leaves the femoral triangle by passing posteriorly between the pectineus and the sauce major muscles and gives an acetabular branch and then divides into ascending and transverse branches. The ascending branch of the medial circumflex femoral artery take part in the trochanteric anastomosis and give off some posterior retinacular arteries which supplies the head of the femur and these are extremely important because they are often torn when the femoral neck is fractured or the hip joint is dislocated. The transverse branch of the medial circumflex femoral artery take part in cruciate anastomosis. Now let's discuss few points about the lateral circumflex femoral artery which is the largest branch of the profunda femoris artery. It passes laterally between the anterior and posterior divisions of the femoral nerve and divides into ascending transverse and descending branches. The ascending and transverse branches take part in the cruciate anastomosis which is formed on the posterior side of the femur below the greater trochanter and the descending branch runs downward along with the anterior border of vestus lateralis and then take part in the genicular anastomosis. And the last branch of the femoral artery is the descending genicular branch which runs in the vestus medialis and then divides into the articular and saphenous branches both of which take part in the anastomosis around the knee joint. So this was all about the femoral artery.